Hey everybody, it's Randy. I have been working my tail off on the Kittyland fire truck. I'm really excited about what's going on with it. I must say it has turned into a bit of an obsession, um, but I wanted to share with you the progress of what has been done and also show you some of the stuff that I'm up to. So Kitty Land number one, as noted here on the top, uh, is of course the first of two fire trucks that were done for Kitty Land in Melrose Park um, by a fire truck company called Darley. Now these were uh, built to haul kids around. Uh, these would go and pick up kids uh, at parties around the neighborhood, bring them to Kitty Land Park, and. Uh, and that sort of thing. And there were two of these. Uh, one of them got more use than the other. This is the one that has had the least use of the two. In fact, I'll see if I can get in here with this. Don't know if you can read that there, but there's just 14,000 original miles on this truck. Now, it has spent a long time in storage. Apparently it was parked because it needed brake work. Um, we are going to take care of the brakes on it, so it'll actually stop. Uh, fortunately, it was stored very well. And what I'm going through here is I'm polishing up e each and every little bit of it. Uh, and it seems like every time I touch this thing, the better it looks. So it had a fair bit of paint fade. Let me bring you around back here. I've been working my way through that. You can see over here on this side, the paint is a bit faded. There's some areas of paint loss there as well. Uh, you can see on this side here, this is with a, uh, a quick polish and glaze by hand. Um, and using a glazing um, type polish, uh, I may hit this a couple more times to try to get a little moisture into that paint and to get it to gloss up a little more. Now, granted, that's probably the worst part of it. That's where the sun hit it the most, as well as dust and fallout from storage. The sides have polished up. Amazing. The chrome is polishing up amazing. You can see how shiny that is. I've got one area here that I haven't polished. Let me see if I can get over here. You can see there's a little pitting or a little dirt and muck along that center rail. Fortunately, it's not too bad. All of it is coming right off and everything is shining up beautifully, as you can see. Uh, the fire extinguishers on the back, they have shined up like diamonds. Absolutely amazing. I've done a little oiling uh, on the ladder to bring out its color just a little bit. I've gotten in here and cleaned the gauges and all the little knobs and everything. And the more I touch this thing, the better it looks. So around front here, what I'm doing right now, fortunately this car was in Illinois and it was stored indoors. One of the problems that we have with cars that are found in the West is that anything that's soft goes to hell so quick. Rubber parts, upholstery parts, that sort of thing, all go away. Now this is the original window rubber on here and you can see it still has some flex to it. For me, for a California guy, that's absolutely mind blowing. And I want to keep it that way. So on this side here, I have treated it and I'm going to go do the other side as well because I want everything to try to stay as moist as possible. And we can see the difference between these two sides. Now I'm not using an off the shelf product from your auto parts store at all. In fact, I went to Walmart and I got this right here, glycerin. Now rubber is a petroleum product and it has some moisture within it as a result. If you can try to pull some of that moisture back out in there or to try to make it look a little bit uh, wetter, um, it's a good thing to do. Now, a lot of the products that you buy off the shelf end up drying out those rubbers more than they do uh, protecting them. And I've found that this stuff here, this glycerin, you can buy a little thing of it here for a few bucks at Walmart or your local drugstore, and you can soak it all in there and it'll work work its way into the rubber and actually bring some life back to it. In fact, if you have a small rubber piece that has really shrunk up over time, try this as an experiment. Put it into a little vat with some of this glycerin and just let it soak. And you'll be amazed at how well it kind of comes back to life. So I'm going over this sort of stuff with a little bit of glycerin. Let me see if I can do this while I am here holding the camera. Give me a sec and get a fresh little blop on there. Now this stuff is really kind of gooey. It's kind of wet. It's uh, 
Got to be a little careful not to get it on everything else because it's kind of a bugger to get off. But if you're careful in here and let's see here, you can kind of work your way around there and see the difference that it's making. So look up here at the top where it's dry. I'll get in there and do that. I'm getting sloppy with it because I'm not paying attention. I'm really wiping the glass more than I am the rubber because I'm holding the damn phone. But you get the idea. You can make it go from this kind of graying type stuff to a black once again. Now, another thing that I've been working on uh, when it comes down to the paint and finish on here is getting rid of some of the old wax residue that has built up throughout the bus. Now, I've kind of hit the passenger side pretty tight there, but here's a spot that I've missed. And by using kind of a soft brussel brush, brush and getting down into that crack, you can make that go away. <sighs> Wipe that with a little polish and it looks so much better. Another issue I am dealing with is some paint loss. There are some areas on the back here that almost look like perhaps they stuck a piece of tape or something on here, and as they lifted it off, it peeled some paint with it. So I went to the local paint shop, I cleaned an area, I showed it to them. They used a little scanner camera to get a, uh, a glimpse into what the actual color was. And he mixed up some of that for me in just a base coat. So it's uh, no clear in it, it's just simple base coat, and then gave me a variety of little toners so I could mix it to match and try to get it as close as possible. So last night, I was a bit tired. I kind of worked on an area. This uh, taillight panel had some big uh, gnarly spots in it. You can see right here, right here, right here. Uh, and I mixed that up and I brushed that on uh, using a striping brush, a nice uh, squirrel hair Mac brush. Um, and you can see it's close. It's a little lighter. Maybe when I get in here and polish this area, it'll blend a little bit more. But I may have to go back for a second pass, darken up that paint a little bit with a little more of the uh, toner that he gave me. Um, but the overall look of it will be significantly better. Uh, here's a picture that shows the damage that was around the taillights. And now you can see it there. So I'm going to approach the damage up here at the top as well. Areas where the striping goes through this. I may try my hand at uh, touching up that pinstripe as well. Uh, it's not going to be perfect, but it is going to be better. So I'd much rather see an area here, like I touched up a little bit here, uh, where at least it's red rather than a big hole. So uh, it's the sort of thing that they most likely would have done back in the day if they kept going with it. It wouldn't have been a whole repaint. And since it is a Survivor original car, I want to try to keep it that way. I also want it to look the best that it possibly can. So some of that stuff is a little unsightly. I've got to take care of that. And if somebody says, hey, you're putting a non-original paint on it, well, well, blow me. I think it's going to make it look so much better. Standing back here, take this thing in. Boy, I gotta get way back here. What a beauty. So I decided to load up the truck and bring it on down to Sebastian's. Uh, Sebastian and my friend Rusty came out to help. We're gonna see if we can get it going. And boom. It fired up almost immediately. It was amazing. We did have to clean the carburetor out. It was pretty gummed up. Um, but it is up and running. Next job here is to do the brakes on it. And uh, once we get the brakes all put together and, uh, well, pet a few dogs, we can take it for its first drive. So here I am hopping in the driver's seat. Uh, we will see if it will go and run and drive under its own power. Really excited here. Uh, I didn't get as much footage as I was hoping, um, but it was fun to capture what we could. So Sebastian hopped in the back, grabbed my phone, and uh, off we go. One more. Clear.
apologies to Sebastian's neighbors for that. off and I'll get a picture of uh, you can get it going by. <laughs> Just a Stop here. Caution, children at play. <laughs> we had such a fun time playing around with this funky little truck, I tell you. Now we all took a turn behind the wheel uh, so we could feel what it was like to drive the fire truck around. Uh, absolute blast. Really excited to get it started and running so easily. This thing had been sitting for 20 years or more. Uh, we backed it up into the driveway here to uh, do a little more brake adjustment and then take it out for another run. Um, but the engine sounds fantastic. I mean, really runs great. Transmission is good. Uh, the brakes, we're getting those worked in. Uh, I think this is going to be a great vehicle to bring out for local parades and shows and things like that. Uh, when Rusty uh, got behind the wheel, Sebastian and I hopped in the back to go for a ride. Uh, and it was absolutely awesome. I mean, if I was a little kid and I was on my way to an amusement park in the back of this thing, absolute pure joy. I mean, it was great. I can't wait to get a whole bunch of buddies in the back of this thing uh, to go for a ride somewhere, anywhere. Just way too fun. Now, while I had the truck out, I needed to get it weighed. So I had it, uh, brought, I brought it over to the local feed shop. Uh, they put it on the public scale there. It looks like it weighs 3,060 pounds, which is not far off of the estimated weight that was painted on the door. Another thing painted on the door, the phone number for the amusement park. Fillmore? A coincidence? I think not. In any case, that's the update on the Kitty Land Fire Truck. I hope you enjoyed the ride. Keep on digging them up and driving them. Bye bye. <laughs>